Welcome to Soup Up Recipes. Today, we're making sizzling rice seafood soup. It's hearty and steaming warm, which makes it the perfect dish for cold winter days. It is bound to bring impressions as it sizzles when you serve. That's gonna add some playful interaction with your family or your guest. Let's get started by making the rice cracker. Usually in China, we will buy it pre-made, but I'm in the USA now, which means we have to make it from scratch. You will need one and a half cup of rice. Wash the rice several times and drain it thoroughly. I'm using jasmine rice. Sushi rice and glutinous rice will also work. Avoid using basmati and brown rice because their grains don't stick together after cooking. I don't have a rice cooker, so I'm going to cook it in a saucepan. For one and a half cup of rice, you will need two cups of water. Turn the heat to high and bring the pot to a simmer. This will just take a few minutes. Don't go away because if you forget the time, it will overflow. Put on the lid, turn the heat to low and cook the rice for another 15 minutes. Once done, fluff the grains. Look how perfect the rice is. Neither wet nor dry no burning at the bottom. Season the rice with half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of garlic powder, and some ground black pepper to taste. And mix well. Wrap a baking pan with parchment paper and put the rice in. Evenly spread it out. Press the rice down tightly so the grains don't separate from each other during the dehydration. Don't use tin foil because I have done it and look what I got. The rice stuck so badly. Also, the thickness of the rice should be about one third of an inch. If it's too thick, it takes forever to dehydrate. There is no need to preheat the oven. Just stick the rice tray in, set the temperature to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and let it dry for three and a half hour. During this time, Come back every 30 minutes to open the oven door to release the steam. This is how the rice looks when you take it out of the oven. It's fully dried and hard. Remove the parchment paper and you can break the rice into bite-sized pieces. You can make these rice crackers ahead of time and store them in a sealed jar at room temperature for up to six months. Whenever you want to eat rice crackers, you just directly deep fry them. All right, set them aside. We're going to make the seafood soup. Here are 300 grams of whole shrimps. Tear the head off. Use a pair of scissors to cut the back open. Peel the shell. Then you should be able to remove the vein. I know it is kind of messy, but the shrimp head and shells contain so many flavors. We need that to make the soup. Here are two gutted squid tubes. Use the tip of the knife and make a long cut down to the pointy bottom. Carefully create parallel diagonal lines that are about half deep into the flesh. Try not to cut it all the way through. Then switch to the opposite direction and create crisscross patterns by making parallel diagonal lines. Make sure the cuts are on the inside of the squid tube because the squid curls from the inside out. Set it aside. I like to add scallops to my soup. Just use paper towels to absorb the excess moisture. Scallops can be pricey. If you want to make this dish budget friendly, you can get a bag of seafood mix from the frozen section in your local supermarket instead of purchasing different seafood individually. Season them with half teaspoon of salt, some black pepper to taste, and a drizzle of cooking oil. Mix well and set it aside. For the vegetables, I like to peel and cut a carrot into slices. The bright color makes an excellent presentation. A few pieces of bok choy. Cut off the end and tear the leaves off. Then slice them roughly. Set it aside. Tear the mushroom into bite-sized pieces as well. 
this is oyster mushroom, but other types will also work. Set it aside. Besides that, I also prepared three cloves of garlic, finely diced, half inch of ginger, sliced thinly, and one shallot, also sliced thinly. Set it aside, and we're ready to cook. Turn the heat to high. Add a drizzle of oil. Go in with the seafood and sear them until golden brown. The squid cooks fast, so you have to take it out of the wok as soon as it curls. Keep an eye on the shrimps and the scallops, and remove them when the color is right. Set the seafood aside. To the same wok, I will add another drizzle of oil because we need some fat to help to get the good stuff out of the shrimp head. Toss in the garlic, ginger, and shallot. Stir for a few minutes over low heat or until the shrimp heads turn pink. We want to see some orange goodness rendering out from the heads. Season it with soy sauce, oyster sauce, and tomato paste. Stir until everything is well mingled. Switch the heat to high. And pour in two cups of hot water, which I boiled with an electric kettle. Hot water does help to bring out more flavors from the shrimp heads. Put on the lid and let it simmer over low heat for a couple of minutes. Use a sieve to fish out all the solid ingredients. They have done their job. We don't need them anymore. Now you have made a rich, flavorful shrimp stock. Toss in the carrot, mushrooms, and the bok choy. Introduce the seafood back into the wok. Stir 30 to 40 seconds. Quickly mix one tablespoon of cornstarch with one tablespoon of water and pour it into the soup. Stir until it thickens, and your seafood soup is done. Give it a taste to see if you need to adjust the softness or not. Mmm, that is delicious and packed with umami taste. All right, let's set it aside because we're going to deep fry the crackers. Bring the oil to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It's good to get one of these instant read thermometers so you can be accurate. Add the rice crackers and stir gently. Fry for 30 to 40 seconds or until the crackers are golden brown. Fish them out. And put them on a serving plate. Here comes the exciting moment. Immediately pour the seafood soup all over the hot rice crackers. Mmm, that looks so good. But we don't have time to admire it. Please enjoy it as soon as you can. Otherwise, you will lose the crunchiness. Some of the rice crackers absorb the sauce and become tender and savory. While the other part of the crackers stay crispy, you can get different textures and depths of flavors.、Mm, this is beyond delicious. I hope you give this a try soon. As always, the printable recipe link is in the description. Go check it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more delicious and authentic Chinese food. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.